Hello there, I'm That Gamer Guy and welcome back for another video. So about a year ago now, I created a new Pottermore account, Pottermore being the official Harry Potter website, and there I did the official Hogwarts sorting quiz and the Ilvermorny sorting quiz, and I did those to prepare me for my second or third visit to the Harry Potter studio tour. Well, guess what? I'm going again. For the second year in a row now, I'm going as part of a friend's birthday celebrations. And despite this being my third or fourth visit, I'm still pretty excited. But to get me in the mood more, there are still two Pottermore quizzes that I have yet to take. Those being the Wand Ceremony and the Discover Your Patronus quizzes. So guess what we're doing today? So I've still yet to invest in some screen capture software. So instead, I'm going to be reading the questions off of my laptop. It's not ideal, but there we go. So I'm going to start with the Wand Ceremony quiz. To ensure we find the perfect wand for you, it's very important that you answer the following questions honestly. First of all, would you describe yourself as average height, short, tall? Fun fact, I'm 5 foot 10, so I'd say I'm probably average. And your eyes, are they dark brown, black, brown, hazel, blue, blue grey, blue green, green, grey, or other? I feel like my eyes have never consistently been one colour. Let me double check in the mirror. So I think they're somewhere between green and grey. I think they're more visibly green than grey, so I'm going to go with green. Was the day on which you were born an even number or an odd number? I was born on the third, so it's an odd number. Okay, now we're getting deep. Do you most pride yourself on your kindness, optimism, determination, resilience, imagination, intelligence, originality? Out of all of those, I think I pride myself most on my... I'm gonna go with originality. I don't know many people like me. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Next question. Travelling alone down a deserted road, you reach a crossroads. Do you continue left towards the sea, ahead towards the forest, right towards the castle? My instincts would take me towards the sea because I've almost always lived by the sea. But my curiosity would take me towards the castle and I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Next question, do you most fear fire, darkness, isolation, small spaces, heights? There's a few there that I don't like, but I think isolation is probably my biggest fear. In a chest of magical artifacts, which would you choose? An ornate mirror, a dusty bottle, a golden key, a silver dagger, a bound scroll, a glittering jewel, a black glove. So I'm drawn to a few of these, and the black glove especially. I'm just gonna go with the black glove and I'm not sure why. So, my wand has chosen me. I hope you can see that, spruce wood with a unicorn hair core, 12 inches and brittle flexibility. So that kind of means nothing to me, so let's find out more about my wand. So spruce wands. Unskilled wand makers call spruce a difficult wood but in doing so, they reveal their own ineptitude. It is quite true that it requires particular deftness to work with spruce, which produces ones that are ill-matched with cautious or nervous natures, and become positively dangerous in fumbling fingers. The spruce wand requires a firm hand because it often appears to have its own ideas about what magic it ought to be called upon to produce. However, when a spruce wand meets its match, which in my experience is a bold spellcaster with a good sense of humour, it becomes a superb helper, intensely loyal to their owners, and capable of producing particularly flamboyant and dramatic effects. So basically, my wand is stubborn and flamboyant. Sounds familiar. Unicorn hair cores. Unicorn hair generally produces the most consistent magic and is least subject to fluctuations and blockages. Wands with unicorn cores are generally the most difficult to turn to the dark arts. They are the most faithful of all wands and usually remain strongly attached to their first owner, irrespective of whether he or she was an accomplished witch or wizard. Minor disadvantages of unicorn hair are that they do not make the most powerful wands, although the wand wood may compensate, and that they are prone to melancholy if seriously mishandled, meaning that the hair may die and need replacing. So I'm perhaps a little disappointed. Secretly was hoping for phoenix feather or dragon heart string, but I can cope with consistency. So now we know my wand, let's discover my Patronus. Okay, so this quiz is timed, and it says to go with my instincts. The pressure's on, so let's do it. Okay, leaf, blade, or thorn? Uh, blade. Seek, protect, or serve? Uh, seek. Sun, wind, or rain? Uh, wind. Stone, wood, or earth? Uh, wood. Mind, heart, or spirit? Heart. My Patronus is a... Expecto Patronum! A greyhound. 
I wasn't expecting that. I think I'll call her Grace. Grace the Greyhound. Or just Gracehound. So there she is, running around. I feel like the Patronus quiz is a lot more random than the others. Literally less than five questions and it's decided. But maybe I'm just disappointed that I didn't get a cat or an owl. But a greyhound will suffice, I guess. So there we go, I've now completed all of the Pottermore quizzes. So let's run through the results one last time. My Hogwarts house is Slytherin. My Ilver Morning house is Thunderbird. My wand is Sprucewood with unicorn hair. And my Patronus is a greyhound. So thank you for watching, please feel free to leave your Pottermore results down in the comments. And with that, I'll say goodbye, please like and subscribe if you want to see more. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, then leave your suggestions down below. I'm not going home. Not really. I hope to see you guys next time. But until then, 